So today I'm talking about a P0325 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P0325 code? Well, it's a NOx sensor one, circuit bank one, or single sensor. And what does this mean? Well, basically engines have what's called a NOx sensor, and that's just detecting any vibrations, knocking or pinging going on inside of the engine. And the NOx sensor is reporting this information back to the computer, which then will adjust the timing until the knocking or vibration goes away. But when you get a P0325 code, the computer sees some kind of problem with the NOx sensor, that there's some kind of issue going on with it. And so it's got to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, the engine's going to have two banks. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. So if you Google the number one cylinder on your engine, since there is differences, that's going to be the bank one side. And then the opposite of that is going to be bank two. If you have a four cylinder engine, then it wouldn't matter. You only have one bank. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, you very likely are going to have two knock sensors on each bank of the engine. And the knock sensor located on the bank one side is going to be the one the computer's seeing a problem with. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0325 code? Well, the first thing that could cause is that that knock sensor has just gone bad. It just needs to be replaced. You can't test that sensor if you want to. There's some good YouTube videos on how you go about testing these. One thing about these knock sensors is that quite often they're located in very hard to reach or very hard to get to spots. Like they could be located up underneath the intake manifold, or they could be located on the side of the engine, like behind the starter or behind the engine mount or something like that. And so because of this reason, quite often many people, what they'll do is that they'll relocate the sensor to another location. And basically what they do is they just relocate the knock sensor on some easier spot to get to, like right on front of the block or something like that. It's going to need to be mounted to the engine very well. And then they find the wires going to the old knock sensor and they just run it to the new one. I don't recommend doing it this way, but a lot of people do this. There's going to be a lot of videos on this and different things like this. The next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring issue like an open or a short or something like that inside of the wires going to the knock sensor. So you can't get schematics for your particular vehicle since there will be differences. And you can't get a multimeter and check to see if there's any open or short inside of the wires or anything like this. There is one thing about relocating that knock sensor on top of the engine at another spot is that you can use it to troubleshoot what's going on. And so I wouldn't recommend relocating that knock sensor and leaving it that way. But you can do it temporarily just to troubleshoot what's going on if it is the wiring or if it is a bad knock sensor. If you were to relocate that knock sensor and you tie into the two wires going back to the old sensor and the code clears and it doesn't come back, then it was just a bad knock sensor. And then at that point, you should go tear apart the engine and replace that knock sensor. But if the code comes back and doesn't clear, then very likely it is inside the wiring. And so at that point, you'd have to dive more deeper into it. You'd have to go check out all the wires and everything else like this. So you can relocate that knock sensor temporarily just to troubleshoot if it is in the wiring or if it is a bad knock sensor. But the next thing that's going to cause this is some kind of wiring issue. And the last thing on the list is going to be some kind of engine malfunction. And basically, if there is something wrong with the engine and that knock sensor is trying to make up for it, then this can trigger knock sensor codes. And this is going to be something like a misfire, the air fuel ratio is off, or the timing chain or timing belt is slipped or something like that. But usually if that happens, you're going to be getting other codes. So if you are getting other codes, be sure to pay attention to that. But the last thing on the list is going to be some kind of engine malfunction. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0325 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.